again my wires how are you all i wonder what you've been up to this week well we've been really missing seeing you guys i wonder if you've missed seeing us though well it, as i say it's great to have you back with us today as we continue in our book of acts and last week carol introduced acts to us didn't she she told us how it's full of action about all the things that happened to the disciples after jesus had returned back to heaven now Carol showed us, didn't she, using that amazing sport family. Um, after Jesus had been, had, sorry, after Jesus had risen from the dead, he spent quite a lot of time with his disciples before he then returned to his father in heaven. And Jesus had spent time with his followers and he'd given them a special job to do. I wonder if you can remember what Carol said that job was. Well, it was to go out and tell people about Jesus. But not just a few people from near where they lived. They were to go off to the far corners of the earth, it tells us in the Bible, to tell everyone the wonderful news about Jesus and about God. But he promised that although he was returning to heaven and he wouldn't physically be there with them, he promised them that he wouldn't leave them on their own. He promised he would send a helper to help and to guide them. Now, the Holy Spirit, which is what, who this helper was, has lots of different jobs. He can work in lots of different ways. And one of those ways is that he is a helper. He helps people to live God's way in a way that pleases God. But he also helps people to go out and tell other people about God too. So that was the Holy Spirit, one of the jobs. And what we're talking about today, that's one of the jobs the Holy Spirit was doing. Now. I haven't got potatoes, I'm afraid, so I couldn't um, continue with Carol's fab spud family. Oh, I just thought they were brilliant. It did make me giggle. She's very creative, this Carol. But I've got these guys with me today. Not quite as exciting, I'm afraid. So I've got Peter. Here he is. Here's Peter. Hello. And I've got his disciples. Sorry, Jesus' disciples here today. So today we're going to hear about the tag when the Holy Spirit came to the disciples. Now, for those of you who I know like to use your Bibles and follow along, today's true story is taken from Acts 2, verse 1 to 41. Here we go. So Jesus had returned to heaven and the disciples and all the followers were now separated from him. They were all together waiting for the Holy Spirit to arrive to help them complete the job just as Jesus had told them to do. When suddenly a loud noise from heaven came, it sounded like a strong wind blowing. The noise filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then they saw something that looked like flames. And these flames were separated and they stood over each person. Over their heads, there was like flames. So just bear with me while I do this bit. So there were tongues of flames that stood over each person. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak different languages. The Holy Spirit was giving them the power to speak these languages. There were some visitors staying in Jerusalem who were from all over different countries. And when they heard this noise, they were all surprised because each one heard the followers speaking to them in their own language. They were completely amazed at this. How is this possible? We are all from different places, but we hear these men telling in our own languages about the great things that God has done. They were all amazed and confused. And they asked each other, what does this mean? Well, Peter stood up with the apostles and he spoke to the crowd. The Father has given the Holy Spirit to Jesus as he promised. So now Jesus has poured out the Holy Spirit and this is what you see and hear. Change your hearts and lives and be baptised, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
This promise is for you. It is also for your children and for all who are far away. It is for everyone the Lord our God calls to himself. Then those people who expected, sorry, ex accepted what Peter had said were baptised. About 3,000 people were added to the number of believers that day. And they spent the time together learning and they continued to break bread and to pray together. Now, that was a bit of a strange story, wasn't it? That, the, that those followers all witnessed. Now, I wonder if you can imagine what it must have been like to be there, to suddenly hear this strange noise coming from heaven and then suddenly what looked like flames and tongues of flames of fire above these people's heads. And on top of that, they all started to speak a different language. Now, I don't know about you, but I struggle just speaking English sometimes. But to suddenly be able to start speaking in lots of different languages so that everybody who was there, all these crowd that had gathered, could understand what they were telling them about God and Jesus. It's pretty amazing, really, isn't it? Now, they were only able to do this because the Holy Spirit had now come upon them and was living in them, helping them just as Jesus has promised. You see, Jesus had given the disciples a job to do, to go out into the world and tell everyone about God. And because he sent the Holy Spirit to work in them, they were able to carry out that job that they'd been sent to do. Now, in Acts 2, verse 21, it tells us this. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So everyone that was there that day who put their trust in Jesus was forgiven of their sins. So we're now able to live as Jesus's friends. And that's still the same for us today as well. The Holy Spirit can work in us too. It helps us to live in a way that pleases God. But it can also help us to go out and to tell other people about Jesus and about God and the wonderful, amazing things that they do. Now, do you think that is hard? Do you think that's a hard thing to do, to go and tell your friends, maybe, or maybe some, some of your family members? Do you think it's easy or hard to go and talk to them about Jesus and God? Well, I think it can be quite hard. It's, it's not always easy, is it? Because you don't know what they're going to say. You don't know how they're going to react. And it's, it can be a bit worrying sometimes and a bit, you can feel a bit nervous about going and speaking to them. Now, even Peter, here he is, good old Peter, who's actually been there and spent time with Jesus. He was a special, one of his special friends, wasn't he? One of his disciples. But he was a little bit like that too. In fact, he was so worried about what was going to happen to him that he even said he didn't know who Jesus was. Do you remember back by the Easter story? When it tells us just after Jesus is arrested, some of the people around question Peter, don't they? They say to him, you were one of them. You were one of those followers of Jesus. And Peter says he, he wasn't. He doesn't know who what's talking about. And it tells us in the Bible that Jesus actually, while he was having the last supper, said to Peter, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. And that's exactly what he said. He told people he didn't know who he was because he was that worried and scared of what people said. So he wasn't very good at this, that point, at speaking to others about Jesus. Now, once the Holy Spirit was then working in Peter, though, look at what he's doing now. Look what he did. The Holy Spirit sent from God was working in Peter and he was now able to stand in front of loud, large crowds of people and tell them about God. And not only that, but in different languages too, and so that he, other people from other places around the world would be able to understand Peter. And so that's what the job of the disciples, so that's how they started the, the, spreading the word of God, by telling the people, going out and telling people through the power of the Holy Spirit about Jesus and about God. You see, he, he changed, he'd got this Holy Spirit working in him, and he spoke out. Now, Jesus, just as he promised, will never leave us. He'll always be with us to help us. And we just need to remember this and to put our trust in him. Now, that's sometimes easier said than done, isn't it? Especially at the moment when we're facing these really difficult and uncertain times. And 
something we've never faced before. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. But it is important to remember that God's there with us. He's right beside us, holding us. He doesn't need to socially distance from us. He's there by us, holding our hands, holding us, guiding us, helping us in every every situation, not just at the moment, but always, always. But it is something that's important to remember at the moment. So, yeah, it might be a bit tricky, a bit hard talking to our friends and our family who don't know Jesus, telling them about God and how wonderful and amazing he is. But how amazing would it be if more and more people came to know Jesus, if the people that you know and love so much come to know Jesus as well and they call on his name and they put their trust in him and say sorry for their sins and enjoy forgiveness too. How amazing would that be? It'd be fab, wouldn't it? So let's try to remember that God sent us the Holy Spirit too. If we trust and put our all all our lives in him that that he will help and guide us as well well guys it's been great having you here again today and you know if you've got any questions about what we've said in any of the video sessions that you've been listening to please feel free to um message uh somebody will put the link on for you if you're not sure who to get in touch with but if you've got any questions at all please feel free to ask that's what here is for and we'll get back to you as soon as we can now, last week, Carol set a challenge for you, didn't she? She asked if anybody would be able to retell a Bible story using some things that they've got at home, maybe some of the toys they've got, maybe some spuds if you've got some spuds, maybe you want to make your own characters. Now, if anybody has done that so far, you might not have had time yet, but if you have, hopefully there'll be a link at the bottom of the page after the video that you can click on and watch either the videos or photographs that people have taken of what they've done so far so brilliant well it's been great having you here with us today guys thank you for joining us and tune in next friday to find out what happens next in our action-packed book of acts take care everyone see you all soon god bless bye for now